Howdy, fellow nerf herders. I like me a good old space western. I don't like having them spoiled by Bantha Poodoo yapping too much. The following is just two Mando loving scoundrels talking about the show. So if and you don't want spoilers, then turn your tauntaun now and head back to base. So long and happy listening. Welcome back, Mando! I am IG-11. I am this child's nurse droid, and require that you remind him to me immediately. Except you were the best in the Parsec. I have spoken. Welcome back, Hail Ming listeners, to uh, Hail Ming Presents This Is The Way. We're excited every week to bring you our take on the latest episode of The Mandalorian, Season 2. And as yeah. always, I'm here with my brother from another mother, Rick Morgan. Rick, how are you doing out there? Doing good, man. <laughs> we're, gonna, <laughs> we're jumping in the ship. We're heading towards Trask. We're going to have a blast with this one, man. Man, yeah, I'm I'm gonna I, I really enjoyed this one and I can't wait to yeah. talk about it. Cuz we said that last episode too and the episode before too, but man, they're they're really up in the game in this series, man. I agree. I I'm you know, I I thought the last one was a great filler episode and that's the way I looked at it. I didn't think that it it measured up to the first one, but I think this one picked right back up with the ongoing story and was fantastic. Yeah, man. So it hits the ground running. I mean, we're still Picks up right from from where the last episode left off, where we're still flying towards Trask. Uh, and let's face it, you know, dude, ship's in pretty bad shape. <laughs> yeah, it's limping. You, you can see one of the one of the turbines is just about gone. And when they get into the the atmosphere of the planet, uh, his shields, nothing's working, and he's just <laughs> basically does a kind of a gracious crash landing, and. It's pretty awesome, man. Uh, just right from the get-go, we've got you know some pretty, you know, white knuckle action going on. Well, I, I think that you know we talked about it. The the ship, the Razor Crest, is in terrible shape, and I think that's one of the things that and the sound effects are two of the things that they've they've taken from the original trilogy that I think mm-hmm. everyone is whether they know it or not, they're really latching onto because the the sound effects as he's he's entering the atmosphere. They're the same as when the Death Star is trying to come around the forest moon of Yavin to to line up and and blow up that moon to get that base. Um, It's the same trajectory stuff. And and like as soon as you hear it, it just takes you back. And the fact that the Razor Crest is all beat up, whereas everything in the the prequel trilogy was all sleek and new and pretty and, and, and almost looked like they were all wearing costumes that had never been worn before. They didn't do that with this series. Everything looks lived in, you know, and, and, and yeah. it makes a huge difference. Yeah. But yeah, what I loved was, of course, you go through the panic of the crash landing and the people calling in saying, hey, you need to slow your ship down. You're not going <laughs> to yeah. make it. And he's just like, yeah, I'm trying my best here. And uh, when he does land, he actually lands it pretty well. And then <laughs> it just it just falls off in the in the, the dock there at the ocean. But what I do love is this big at at crane looking thing. Yeah, it's almost like they modified one of the at ats to just be a working machinery, you know, yeah. heavy lifting device. And it must have some long legs because you know it's sitting in this ocean. I mean, I'm sure it's a shallow point because they have a port there. But I mean, it's it's just this. Yeah, you're right. This is this walker, you know, with a big crane head <laughs> picking up the uh, the Razor Quest. I, I 
<laughs> I thought it was great. It was a great, like, uh, exciting intro without really adding any kind of combat to it. It was kind of like, well, you know, and, and we're still barely limping along to the next planet because that's yeah. the way this is going. And, you know, you see a Mon Calamari sitting there on the um, on the dock. You know, he's yeah. kind of he's got his little tablet for people entering and he's shaking his head like, oh, my God, another one. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and then, he, you know, Mando comes out and he's like, can you fix it? He's like fix it nah make it fly yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah he's really good and, and of course then you get the salamander frog people you know meeting at the yep. port and they're and they're just cute man they're yeah, really they are, really man. cute you know Becky was like it's almost like they dressed him up as like you know old-timey immigrants you know meeting other people. I, say, I said it's exactly what this is i mean that's what they're playing off of and you know uh, yeah, man, it's sweet to see them get together, and they're excited, and, you know, and Mando's like, yeah, yeah, he's got that Bruce Campbell, yeah, yeah, that's that's great. Can you put me in the direction I need to go? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I and, mean, uh, it, and the, the, you know, right, and, and she even said in the last episode, you know, her husband went off to find a hospitable place for them and find work and so that they could have yep. a, you know, a life together. So, yeah, it's it's entirely that immigrant thing, and, and uh and then, of course, you know, the, the, the frog guy is like, yeah, yeah, just go right over here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like 30 seconds away, right there. That's where you'll <laughs> just, find out about See it. that door? Just walk in that door <laughs> yeah. right there. Because that's the one way thing, this goes. you got to keep moving. One, one thing we don't mention, though, is when this is going on, we see a figure that's cloaked that's kind of hiding back in the, in the back, and Mando kind of sees this figure. And then you get a few people passing by, and then that figure is gone. And Yeah, it's that I, whole I'm, disappearing character trick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was just disappointed it didn't have a real long black nose and went ring 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 or like a uh, Cubert, you know, like from, <laughs> ring, ring. <laughs> Yeah. That's What was that a Kubaz? Never mind. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the, so we we go in this little restaurant and he's asking questions and uh, Mon Calamari is waiting on him as well and he's like I'm looking for more people of my kind. Do you know anybody that knows who these people are? And the waiter's like, uh, well, I don't, but I know some people over here that might. So he goes and talks to uh, a Quarren. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they give actual names no, of they these don't. people. But that's okay. But, There's so many names flying around. I'm trying to catch them, and, and man, it's... It, yeah. I, I like the fact that they don't feel the need to make every reference to anything mentioned in the other movies, which is kind of what made the movies good, is like they mention stuff without context, you know, the Kessel right. Run and... And uh, it, all this stuff that made it seem like, of course, you should know what it is, but you don't because it's all in an yeah. exotic foreign galaxy. And and so, you know, the fact that they, they, they add that stuff in from the previous movies, but they also just kind of like throw out new names and stuff like you should know what they are and never explain them. <laughs> well, the Quarren looks like they would be kin to the Mon Calamari to some extent because they are all squiddish kind of people. Yeah, I mean, um, in, in the Clone Wars cartoons, the ones that Gendi Tartowski did, they're, they're fighting. It's kind of like the civil war of Mon Calamari is between the Admiral Akbar's people and the Korans, and the Korans joined the uh, the uh, the separatists. So yeah. you know, they they always kind of have been good and evil on the same planet. But the cool thing about this is the Korans like. Yeah, I can take you to where they are, and we'll have to take a ship, though, and not your typical Star Wars flying ship. We're going on the high seas. Yeah. And we're doing a little sailing. Yeah, and, a, <laughs> and a, you know, it's a it's some kind of a fishing boat. You know, it's a big trawler with a hole in the middle, and he's like, hey, you want to watch us feed this thing? And uh, <laughs> Wait, wait a minute. For a minute, first he goes, I am the Pirate King. <laughs> <laughs> He does his little his little squid tentacles go. Blah, 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 blah. I am the Pirate King. Look at this big thing. <laughs> uh, if you don't know what that is, check out episode. I don't know. It's the farcical episode nineteen. Episode nineteen of the Hell Ming Power Hour. You'll know what that's all about. Oh man, that, that one's that's that one's a ton of fun. But that's good stuff. So you yeah, know, man. Moving he opens along up with this episode. You know, we, we're, moves up. Go ahead. Yeah, he opens up this water cage, and he's got this creature in it. And I didn't catch the name of the creature that he that he says. It was a mamacore. Mamacore, and uh, you know he's they're feeding it, and it brings it up to the surface. And right when it happens, this quarren takes a staff and knocks the baby, 
the child over into the water. And this thing just comes up almost like the Sarlacc pit kind of thing and just grabs the baby in its in its uh, container and just goes down with it. Right. It, so It eats that, that yeah. It eats yeah. that crib and everything. So Mando jumps in, and then they shut the gate over the top of him. So all this was a just a way to capture them. And uh, they're trying to kill it, man. They're trying to stick his head underwater and keep him from, from coming back up. And he's not even trying to get down to the to the monster just yet. He's just trying to get the bars broken loose, I guess. Right, because, you know, they uh, yeah, they, they want to steal the, the, the Beskar armor. And, you know, they're talking about how rich they're going to be when they – when they kill this guy and take his stuff and yeah and uh it's a, it's dire the situation looks bad for uh yeah. it's like if we were going to commercial right now the guy would be like well it looks real bad for old <laughs> din jarin let's see what happens after this commercial break <laughs> yep and then during that break when we come back from commercial there's uh, another group of mandalorians it looks like show up there's three of them and I'm going to say it. If, if I was going to be in a group of Mandalorians, my armor would probably be something like these guys because it's blue with the gray. To me, it's just sharp. Yeah, yeah, it looks and, great. Uh, you know, and, and there are definitely throwbacks to that whole Clone Wars series, which my son has watched the yep. entirety of, but I, I haven't. But I, but in walking through, I know these are characters, and their emblems are, are characters from that. Yep. It, Showing they up. Look great. Because they look great. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic, and and the cool thing about it is you got some. It's it's it's, you know, you got male and female Mandalorians kicking some squid butt on this ship, right? And they opened up the container, they get Mando out of there, and then one of them says he he tells them, "Hey, that creature down there's, you know, got the kid." So one of them just says, "I'm on it," jumps in, goes down there. You just see an explosion underwater, <laughs> and they come out with the container. Rip it open and the baby's just fine. <laughs> and before you know it, you're friends. They're friends. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean they're badass. I mean they they come in and they lay waste to this this group of they folks, are. and then they're just. I mean, and, yeah. and like they're you're right. Their armor looks high speed and aerodynamic. You know, they're two chicks and a dude, and and they uh they they really look great. Yeah. And, and you know it's, it's 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 really great whenever a Mandalorian comes in like the like Mando's troop from the other one they all look great just in a different yeah. way you know they they really yeah. did a good job of using this armor to create characters that whether they take their helmet off or not you can tell them all apart yeah that that's what I was gonna say is even though they're all kind of the same you're starting to get that separation of almost like little clans of groups that belong to each other and and you know they're all kind of on the same team but they're all in their own little camps. And um, we kind of get some story of that as we go along. And after all this is over, we find out that it's it's uh, the leader of this group is Bo-Katan, which comes from the Clone Wars, like you were talking about, the animated series. Yeah. And uh, played by Kate Sackoff, which Katie Sackoff is the voice for that character in the animated series. So now she's actually playing the character, which... Well, that's if, awesome. If you don't I didn't know, know that. Yeah, if you don't know who Katie Sackhoff is, she's Starbuck from the the rebo- reboot of uh, Battlestar Galactica. Oh, that's awesome. All I knew was that she had a severe headband, man. <laughs> yeah. She had this yeah. headband that's got lights on either side of it, and it like holds your hair back. And it's, um, it yeah. is a hair ornament to, to end all hair ornaments, that's for sure. Yeah, she's she's a, a big character in, in the Clone Wars. And um, this is... The whole point of this is they're this little ragtag group that are on a mission that happens to be happening at this port where all this is taking place, and they happen to find this other Mandalorian. So we find out that that cloaked figure we saw earlier was actually one of these ladies that's in this group that was kind of saying, hey, wait a minute, there's another Mando here. Right, right. And, and you know, they're, they're kind of main characters, too. Like, you know, they, yeah. they aren't just nobos, but another thing, you know... Then of course you know when they take off their helmets, he's immediately like, "Oh, you're not really yeah. Mandalorians. Where'd you get the armor?" Right. And they're like, "Well, we we have more, um, you know, we have more of a right to it than you do because we're real Mandalorians." And you know, where did you get the armor? And he's like, "Well, you know, I got the armor the right way." And they're like, "No, no, it didn't happen like that." But <laughs> and w- as soon as he says, it's "You know, pretty close," <laughs> as soon as he says, you, "You know, you know, you took your helmet off. You're not a real Mandalorian." One of the other uh, ones, she she says, kind of under her breath, she says, "Dank, Farrick." Which yeah. I had to look up. It's it's actually a curse word in the Star Wars universe. 
Well, he says it too when they're crashing the ship, you know, when they're at the beginning. So oh, did he? I, I, I didn't catch it, that. Yeah. Man, so I, I picked I picked it up that it must be some kind of you know curse word. So well, I I love it. It's so dense. These episodes are so dense that like I watched this one twice and I'm still like finding out stuff from what you noticed. So that's why I love this show. And uh, yeah. and man, I, I love just the the fact that they're playing on the depth of this galaxy to really deliver stuff in a short episode that's just so densely packed. But again, and they're, you know, they're pulling from pulling from all the sources too. Not only the the literature stuff, but the animated series, the movies. You know, they're they're really doing a nice job of tying it all together. I know we say that every episode, but you see it more and more as we go along. Yeah, and when they refer to Din as well, you're a child of the Watch. Well, what that is is again from the Clone Wars. That's the Death Watch, which was. The way they describe it in the episode is they're more of a separate, uh, super religious version of the Mandalorian that want to get things back to the old way of you know the 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 stature that it was to be a Mandalorian. So, uh, so basically the Amish, <laughs> the right, right. Amish Mandalorian. Yeah, they're, um, they're zealots. They have they have a religious. You know, they, they it was like this is the way, right? And they're like, you know, we right. we just won't stray from the way, and everything will be fine. Let's go back. And yep. you know, sometimes that's a good idea, and sometimes you, know, you got to move forward. Who knows? But and uh, this all this all ties into for the search for the dark saber. Uh, right. I know we haven't gotten much into that, but this is all about reclaiming the throne uh, for for the Mandalorians. And Bo Katan is rightfully, according to the legend, she's rightfully the next heir of the throne, which is why this episode's called the Heiress. Right on. Um, she's supposed to be, you know, the the next uh, King Arthur, right? And uh, that's kind of where this thing is heading. So they are there to do this mission, and they help the Mando out, so he'll help them. And he's like, look. I don't need any of this. Uh, oh, we forget about the other scene where after after they have the little confrontation, he's like, "Yeah, I'm out of here." So he jettisons off of the ship. Yeah. And when he lands, there's, a, there's another group of cord. It's like, "You killed my brother. Prepare to die." <laughs> yeah, and in, in much the same manner, yeah, they end it the same way. The the other three Mandalorians show up and they're and one is, and and Bo Katan's like, oh, "He didn't kill your brother. I did." And then just we just kill them all. It's like. It's like half oh, a man. second, and all of them are dead. Yeah, yeah. This is. I mean, I know we got excited in season one when uh, when all the other Mandalorians show up and had the big the big fight, but this is that tactical thing you want to see. These guys are bad. Yeah, they have got it together, and uh, yeah, this is uh, from here on it just kicks butt. But they they convince Mando that hey, I've got information of a you know to lead you to a Jedi that you're trying to get to. So you can, you know, take this offspring to whoever it, need, it needs to go to. But in trade, I need you to help us because we're in Trask. This is a black market dock. And we need these weapons that are on this Imperial freighter ship. We want to get those because that will help us get to the person, which when they're talking about that, they're talking about Moff Gideon, who's yeah. got the actual Darksaber. And As for like the last they, episode of the last season, you know, they showed right. him with it. Yeah. So if they can defeat this guy, get the dark saber, then reclaim the throne. That's kind of the whole mission here. So he decides that okay, I'll help for trade for this information on the Jedi. They drop little baby off at the frog people's house. They're nice enough to take him in. And and, and, uh, and I'm the only one that was like, uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you're gonna come back and, and they're gonna be stringing uh, the child up because you know. <laughs> Because they caught him eating an egg, but I think now that the eggs are fertilized and one of them hatches a little tadpole, you know, yeah. then um, it's different. Yeah, and I guess it has to be different because people have been losing their crap over this that last episode about him eating the eggs. Yeah, they'll get over it. <laughs> oh, I, never mind when you go to the kitchen and open that carton of eggs and you know eat you an omelet, but. Yeah, I'm, you know. I'm not even getting into any of that. Like, I'm I'm a part of a couple of Mandalorian gro- groups, and, you know, there's people coming on there. I get it. It's in te- And yeah. I said it in that last episode. It was intended to make the the child less of a, a cutesy thing and to make you have some issues with him. 
Like, wait, wait, well, you know, he did something that makes me uncomfortable because the mom is right there trying to get her eggs to her, you know, her husband and the baby's eating them. So now, now you can't just say, oh, it's cute. Let's, let's, you know, let's right. have a coffee mug with his cute little face on it now. <laughs> you know, it gives you issues with it, which is what a good story should do. Should make you it, question it, the characters. But at the same time, he's still a child, which he doesn't have an understanding of the whole fertilization of the eggs things. He's a kid that finds something in the carpet, picks it up, and puts it in his mouth. True. You know, so it's still playing off of that too. Anyways, never mind. But they take him in, they take care of him, and I'm telling you, man, this this scene where they go on the mission, they jump on this freighter ship, is just awesome. This is like, why couldn't this be on the big screen? Because this is killer. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And she says it's a, it's an Imperial Gazanti freighter. And, you know, yeah. again, I'm just trying to catch all these names and words for when they come up with something later and I can go, yay. But, I mean, yeah, this, this freighter comes, it, it blasts off and you see it across the horizon with the three thrusters going. And, again, yeah. it looks like it's a weather-worn Imperial freighter. It's got all the hallmarks of the old Star Destroyers. And they got... St- there are stormtroopers that are on either side of it as guards, but they don't see them coming, man. They 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 jetpack up there and they start this siege, this this attack, and it's just yeah. incredible. It's really awesome, man. They and they're just cleaning the house with these guys, and your guys up in the cockpit are like hearing the reports. We're being attacked. We're being ambushed, and I think they're they're Mandalorian, and there's at least ten of them. And then one of them does like a heat reading thing is like wait a minute i only see four in the system so that just shows you again just how awesome this group is i mean they're they're you know like navy seals going in here and just wiping these stormtroopers out from section to section of this ship and then they make their way to the back to where all the weapons are and (laughs) and they shut the doors on each side of them kind of trap them in between and i love that guy's like i think we got a trap we got trapped in the in the the control room cell, and they're like, "What?" <laughs> right, right. It, it's like the supply control room or something, and then you know, immediately you're, yeah. you, we go, we got a trap in there, ah, because they all just get sucked yeah. out into space. You know, they hit the they hit the dock door, and everything goes flying out the back of the ship. It's it's great, man. But needless to say, they get in there, and these are some awesome looking weapons i'm like why are stormtroopers not using these weapons because these things look killer yeah yeah that's a good question like i i kind of thought they were mandalorian weapons from the way she was talking in the tavern but i guess that doesn't make any sense you know it's just that there there's a cache of of heavy military assault weapons that they need i guess to, to arm their troops uh to go retake mandalore but is it mandalore yeah. is that their home world is mandalore yes yeah yeah Man, I I feel like I just don't know. For a long time, I knew everything, and now, <laughs> now I just have to relearn. But, but I want to I want to give a shout out to the sun tanned captain dude, man. Yeah, this dude's got a yeah. tan, <laughs> and like, what a tan! Yeah, he, and he's just, you know, he's not getting too excited. He's like, uh, he calls up uh, Marf, Moff Gideon, and he's like, uh, yeah, we're under siege, and. Seems like the same one's been tagging us before, but uh, we we need a uh, backup like immediately. But he's not; he's keeping pretty calm. And then when Moff Gideon's like, "Yeah, I'm afraid it's too far gone," so uh, you know what to do. Dude never bats an eye or anything. He's like, "Of course." Yeah. And pulls out his blaster, shoots the two pilots, jumps in the pilot seat, and proceeds to crash the ship and kill everybody on board. You know, hoping to get rid of. You know, not only the Mandos, but but just yeah, all the you know, all get the, rid of the, the everything, all the stuff that they were going to get a hold of. You know, he, he's yeah. like, well, you know, we have got to get rid of all this stuff if it's going to fall into enemy hands. And right, uh, and so you know that then the next thing, you know, you got the them sieging the ship, you got them taking the stuff, and now they have to go get the ship under control before it crashes into the ocean planet of Trask. You say, yeah, yeah. So it's it's on a collision course with. Uh, with wackiness there and they have to <laughs> they have to get through and you know there's another you know thing where mando jumps in there and takes some blaster fire and drops some grenades and blows them all up yeah. and then they get in there and and uh and uh bo-katan bo-katan see i i, I turned the page so i didn't have it written down um 
Bo Katan, you know, starts starts uh, interrogating the the captain guy, who, as far as I could tell, yeah. didn't have a name, but he was he had a tan, man. This dude was <laughs> tan, and and he's like, I'll tell you nothing. And then he then he does the old cyanide pill in the tooth. Yeah, yeah, but this is more like an electrical charge. It's yeah. like it like sends you know electronic pulses to his brain and just kills him instantly. And it's like, wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I got cyanide tooth imperial style. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, he he does himself in, and then Mando and one of the other uh, guards gets in the seats, and they barely get the ship back up in time, and uh, the the mission is is accomplished. And when all is said and done, Bo-Katan says, "Hey, why don't you just join us? We make a pretty awesome team. Come with us, and we'll rule our planet again together." And he's like, yeah, you know, you know what? I've got something I got to do. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you know what? I really, I already rule, and so I don't need y'all. Peace. <laughs> so yeah, they they uh, split split their ways, and uh, uh, this is where Mando goes back and and gets the baby. And at this point, the the frog couple has had a little baby, and it's in a little petri dish, and. Baby Yoda, or baby, I don't call him Baby Yoda, but the baby is <laughs> <laughs> really enthralled with this thing. I'm thinking, oh, no, he's going to pick it up and put it in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> but he does it. And you kind of get the thing of he just he wants it, like as a pet. And, he, and then uh, when they're leaving, Mando even says, no, nah, I don't have room for another pet. So Right, right. Uh, not to mention, we'd be taking it from these frog people that the, their <laughs> their whole purpose in life was to have this baby. So, right, uh, right. And I'm thinking that's one of the eggs. The other ones are probably hatched too. We hope. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We would hope. You would hope so. And uh, we get back to the dock where <laughs> where the Mon Calamari has been fixing this ship. And wow, what a job this guy's done on this ship, man. man. <laughs> Like the outside, you see that he's welded on all kinds of you know scrap parts from other stuff to close up the hole. But but then like what I like is when you get inside, you know, it's got like fish netting and, and like in strapping and stuff holding things together. Yeah, man. He walks I mean, in, he's like take... Mon Calamari. <laughs> Fishing nets are wrapped around the seats just to hold the just to hold the cushions on the chairs. <laughs> it's I don't know, man. I, I got a big blast out of that, man. He's got just you know, ropes tied to stuff, hold, <laughs> holding things together. Mando starts it up, and this thing's just shaking and rattling. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, just like you said, he's got that Mon Calamari. He's just shake his head like, man, come on. And but you, Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was, was going to say. <laughs> you, go ahead. You. <laughs> okay. One thing we did get is when the Mandalorian is leaving, uh, Bo Katan, and she actually tells him that you got to go to Corvus and look for Ahsoka Jano, which is another Clone War character that will definitely play a big part in all this. Uh, yeah, yeah, we had heard she was going to be involved, and uh, Ahsoka Tano it was kind of like the Clone Wars character, really. Yes, yeah, that's right. Um, and you know, you know, that's not going to be. It's going to require some jumping through some hoops to get to her. It's not going to be just pull up and say, Hey, are you Ahsoka? Okay. Hey, I've got this baby. So, uh, there's definitely going to be some, some, uh, some action leading up to them even meeting each other. I'm sure. Well, and, and, you know, she even gave him a city. She said the city of Caladan on, on the forest moon of Corvus. So, you know, yeah, that's pretty good. Cause usually they just say, well, go to this planet. And it's like, man, have you ever tried to find one person on a planet? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> At least he has a city. But I also wanted to say that, that you know, on the and that's exactly why I was cutting you off was was to uh, to say what you just said. But I also yeah. caught that you know, do you catch where where uh, she was like, well, if you want to know about the Jedi, you got to help me take this whole ship now. And he was like, you're changing the terms right. of our deal. And she says, yeah, uh, this is the way. <laughs> yeah, and you kind of <laughs> wonder about that too because it's almost like okay, I mean, I, I get. It's just like the the ends justifies the means, right? So, I don't know. She may not be the best person to be leading, you know, the the Mandalorian civilization. I mean, if this is her decision making abilities, hey, maybe so. I don't know. You, I know, mean, you, you question the character a little bit. 
it's not like uh, he had much of a choice at that point. He could have been like, nope, right. I got your stuff. You're crashing in the ocean. No, I'm leaving. You know, but right. Yeah, there wasn't really much of a choice there. It, but it was a, a moment where, you know, he was like, hey, you can't just change the deal. And she's like, what was the deal anyway? Come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah. It, hey, it's a great episode. It, it's it really, is. really good. It, um, it's so good. Like, and it's better than the last one, in my opinion. And yeah. it's on par with the first. Yeah, I mean, th- these these they're really hitting it. All cylinders are kicking in in this second season, man. So uh, I'm just blown away by just, just how good this is. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next one. Me too, man. Well, okay, so that was Mandalorian episode 12, was it? 11, 12, 12. The 12. Eras. <laughs> There you go, folks. Hey, let us know what you're thinking about this, if you're enjoying it, if you're not. Uh, if you've got some stuff that we missed on here, because I know there's tons of Easter eggs and all of these. Uh, yeah, let's just keep that conversation going. Till then, we'll just uh, we'll see you next time right here on This is the Way. <laughs>